this was a prime instance where the DA's office needed to set, uh, uh, um, send a message to the community. Now at five, supporters of the recall Chesa Boudin campaign are outraged over what they are calling a lack of proper punishment for a stealing spree that grabbed national headlines. Good evening, everyone. I'm Julie Hayner. And I'm Mike Meebeck. Two months after San Francisco businesses were targeted by looters, we're now getting a sense of how justice is starting to shape up. You might remember seeing people with arms full of merchandise running out of several stores without even paying. KTV's Christian Captain live in San Francisco tonight. And Christian, several suspects were arrested in the first case we know is now over. Yeah, in all, about nine suspects were arrested. You remember back in November when those cases went to trial. At least one of those cases is now resolved. Another one very close to being resolved. And one of those suspects, all of those suspects now out of jail at this time. And it appears that their jail time for this instance, at least, is now over. The images from November 19th are hard to forget. Suspects running through the streets of San Francisco, arms full of loot. While Union Square received most of the attention, it was far from the only target. That same night, police say three men broke into this cannabis dispensary in the city's Mission District, cutting a lock on the front door and making off with merchandise. Three suspects would eventually be arrested. Renard Jones was arrested for multiple felonies, including burglary, receiving or buying stolen property, and obstructing a peace officer. Now, court documents show that on Thursday, he was allowed to plead guilty to misdemeanor trespass. He got credit for 10 days of time served, one year probation, and fines. Another suspect, Michael Ray, has already had his first degree burglary, felony conspiracy, and receiving or buying stolen property charges reduced to a single second degree commercial burglary charge. University of San Francisco law professor Lara Bazelon says that's not a surprising outcome. Despite the high profile nature of the offense, she says nine out of 10 cases reach some sort of negotiated plea deal rather than a trial. I know that your viewers are probably really used to thinking about every charge as ending up in a courtroom, kind of like law and order. And actually, most people end up negotiating an agreement with the DA, and that's what happened here. Brooke Jenkins served as a prosecutor in San Francisco for seven years, but last year left the district attorney's office and is now working on the campaign to recall Chesa Boudin. She says while deals are commonplace, this case should have served as an example. She says the DA promised felony charges, which he delivered, but she says he failed to follow through. This was a prime instance where the DA's office needed to set uh, uh, um, send a message to the community that the that this type of conduct is not acceptable in San Francisco. And this would not have been an instance where pleading someone down to a misdemeanor was appropriate. And remember, these are just two cases, and they were related to the cannabis dispenser that was looted that night in November. We reached out to the DA's office repeatedly today to try to get updates on the other cases that are making their way through the courts. So far, we've not heard back. We're live in San Francisco. Christian Kaftan, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And you have to wonder if any of those cases will indeed see a trial down the road. All right, Christian, thank you for that report.